Practice problem number three, associated with problem C. During a rodeo, a clown runs eight meters north, turns 55 degrees north of east, and runs 3.5 meters. Then, after waiting for the bull to come near, the clown turns due east and runs 5.0 meters to exit the arena. What is the clown's total displacement? All right, here's uh, our, our new issue. Uh, in the past couple of problems, we've taken two different types of movement, uh, decomposed them into their individual X components and Y components, and then we would add the X component, uh, each X component together to get a total X component, or sorry, X, um, yeah, the total X displacement, right? Displacement, the X uh, uh, plane. And then we do the same thing with the Y components, right? We, we broke those two triangles down into their component Ys, and then we added those two Y values together for a total Y displacement. Then we could create one large triangle and use our <clears throat> Pythagorean theorem and inverse tangent function to get our information. The only difference here is that now there are three movements. So the, you guessed it, they're going to be three triangles, okay? But uh, it makes kind of drawing our... Uh, drawing our pictures uh, all the more important so we can conceptualize the triangles that we're actually dealing with. Um, so let's start with establishing our coordinate system. And so plus, plus, minus, minus. Now, um, <clears throat> first movement is 8.0 meters north. Uh, I'm going to say that's north. That's just north. Cardinal directions. Hopefully that's okay with you. Again, you can define your coordinate system however you want, uh, but you do have to define it. Okay. Uh, this is the most common convention. Uh, so that's, that's what you'll see me use. Um, okay. So, Due north, okay, that's, a, that's, a, that's 90 degrees up, right? That's a 90 degree angle. Uh, and so we're going to go straight up. Eight point zero meters. Okay, cool. And then turns 55 degrees north of east, right? So turns 55 degrees north of east, not... Not from original direction. Okay, I, I really want to emphasize uh, the question here. It's 55 degrees north of east, north from the east direction, not the original direction, right? So if I turn 55 degrees from the original direction, uh, you know, I'd be moving maybe down this way or down this way from the original direction. This is north of east, which is east, okay? That's that's this away. Okay, this is east. So this clown is moving 55 degrees north, which is up kind of in this y direction. 55 degrees up this way. And then, oh, let's see, how much is it? Uh, 3.5 meters, so. So, 3.5 meters. Hopefully you guys can read that. I'm not writing too small. <clears throat> um, then, the clown turns due east. Again, I've defined east as, you know, kind of zero, zero degree movement to the right in the X component. Uh, and runs five more meters. And now the clown's safe. So I have three different moves here, three different movements. Uh, so I have three different triangles. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so we do have some trickiness because uh, we're using you know sine and cosine. And we're going to end up using a, a ninety degree angle. Okay, this is, a, this is a ninety degree angle, and this is a zero degree angle. Okay, and just so you guys know, this would be. Oh, sorry. Zero degrees. This would be 90 degrees. 
This would be 180 degrees, and this would be 270 degrees. Okay, and so that's that's where I'm getting these from. Your kind of normal uh, triangle triangle rules. So let's start with our first triangle. So what's the x component of the first triangle? Well, I need to take into consideration that first uh, that first resultant, the 8.0 meters, and I'm going for uh, the x component, right? So in this direction here. So the again, uh, for this angle being 90 degrees, right? 90 degrees. The the adjacent here is going to be the x the x component, right? The adjacent. So I'm going to use cosine of 90. Oh, sorry. I'm still in my equation of the angle, the first angle. So that ends up being 8.0 meters times the cosine. Now I'll write 90 degrees. And calculator actually tells me that's zero meters, which makes sense because there's no movement in the x direction. Ha ha, no movement in the x direction. That makes sense. But what about the y direction? Oops, oh, sorry, y direction for that first angle. Now, I'm just going to guess right here. It should it should end up being 8 meters. I'm just going to guessify there. But I'm talking about that first resultant. I'm now going to do sine, right? Uh, because this is that 90 degree angle. Uh, this is the, uh, uh, the side opposite that first angle. 8 meters times the sine of uh, 90 degrees. And what does the calculator tell me? It actually tells me that it is 8.0 meters. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Which makes sense. There's only a Y displacement here. There's no X displacement on that first movement. All right. Let's try the second triangle. Um, again, the X component in that second triangle, again, here's the angle. Here's the angle. So it's adjacent over hypotenuse. That's going to be cosine of the second angle, which uh, ends up being... 3.5 meters, what was that angle? 55 degrees. And it ends up being two significant figures, 2.0 meters. Now the Y component for that second triangle. Again, here's that Y component. So again, here's the angle opposite. All right, I'm looking for the opposite. That's the Y component over hypotenuse. So that tells me to use sine of the second angle. So that ends up being 3.5 meters times the sine of 55 degrees is the angle on that, that second triangle. And calculator tells me two significant figures, 2.9 meters, okay? Third triangle, X component. Talk about that uh, third, uh, third displacement there. Um, Third displacement, again, cosine, we're going to go cosine uh, of, well, this is zero degrees now. So my third angle is zero degrees. So 3.5 meter, oh, sorry, not 3.5, what is it, 5? Oh, oh, messed that up. Okay, you guys forgive me, 5.0 meters there. Cosine of zero degrees. Okay, uh, now that's just gonna be only five meters, which makes sense because this is the X component. There's only displacement in the X direction. There's no Y movement here, right? It's, it's, there's only X direction. So it makes sense that, uh, you know, if you're confused about whether or not to do sine or cosine on these, on these you know, kind of no angle or straight up movements, <clears throat> you can use common sense uh, to, to help you there. So this ends up being all five meters. Uh, and again, just, just as a guesstimation, when I do this Y third Y component, there should be a no Y component here. It should be zero because it didn't move north at all, just pure east. So again, third displacement, sine of the uh, third angle, 
which is zero degrees. And sure enough, it comes out to be zero meters. So now I have three X components and three Y components. I'm gonna add them together. Add the Y's together. And so I'll end up with uh, an X total, which is the first X component plus the second X component plus the third X component which ends up being zero meters plus 2.0 meters plus 5.0 meters uh, to give me a grand total of difficult math seven meters now i can do the i can add the y components together again so i'll have a y number one plus the y number two plus the y number three that ends up being 8.0 meters plus 2.9 meters plus, what was that, zero meters. Again, very difficult math here, so if you need to take a break, go for it. Um, you have to go 10.9 meters. Um, and now I can make my... Uh, oh, I can make my, I can make my triangle. <clears throat> so our initial movement was up and then we ended up moving to the east so I'm gonna draw my uh, resulting triangle with a Y component of 10.9 meters and then an X component of 7.0 meters and now I can work with that oh, oh, sorry should I say work for that result Again, displacement, right? Dis displacement is a vector. Vectors have magnitude and direction, right? So for magnitude, I'm going to use the Pythagorean theorem, and for direction, I'm going to be using the inverse tangent function. So let's go. Uh, Pythagorean theorem, solving for uh, that hypotenuse already. I have my delta x squared plus my delta y squared, all square rooted, uh, with the values that I just pulled from these totals. That ends up being 7.0 meters squared plus 10.9 meters squared, still under the radical. Uh, let's actually square those numbers we end up with 49 meters squared plus 119 meters squared. Three significant figures here. Still under the radical. Let's add these like terms. 168 meters squared. Still under the radical. Uh, let's actually square root this. Three significant figures. Thirteen point zero meters. That's uh, that's going to be the magnitude of the displacement. But uh, we need that angle, right? We need this angle. We're going to use the inverse tangent function. Again, uh, this right here is uh, the angle to which we are referring. So opposite over adjacent, right? That's what tangent is. So opposite over adjacent. That tells me to put the 7.0 meters on top, as opposed to 10.9 10 10 meters um, on the top of, of this fraction. Okay, and here I am going to go with two significant figures because of that 7.0. So I'm going to go with 33 degrees. Let's see. And we were initially moving this way, now we're moving that way. Uh, 33 degrees, I would say uh, using this vertical component as as north, I would say, right, we've gone 33 degrees this way, which is east according to the coordinate system that I have defined. And so I'll call this east of north. 
Now, uh, you could actually say this the other way around relative to the east direction. Uh, that would end up being 57 degrees. Would that be uh, north of east? Uh, that would be a perfectly legitimate answer as far as I can tell. Just make sure that you establish your coordinate system and you're uh, specific with regard to your direction.